My name is Laura. Today is the 19th of December 2019, and I'm in Switzerland. I'm here to end my life in, my, in, in the most wonderful, peaceful way by just going to sleep with my loved ones around me. This is my own choice. I feel that talking openly about death and giving people the opportunity to prepare themselves for this day is a gift we can give our loved ones and also a gift we can give to the community. This needs to be made public and the most effective way of making anything public nowadays is not to write a book, is to make a film. And I am very, very privileged to have a daughter and a granddaughter who are filmmakers, therefore I feel really almost obliged. Mom, telling your story is one of the hardest things you've ever asked us to do. <sighs> I think it started with that phone call. Grandma, when you called and asked me if I wanted to go on a river cruise with you in Europe, of course I said yes. So, tomorrow, I'm going to Amsterdam with my 87-year-old grandmother. As I'm a filmmaker, I thought I would document the entire process. And make a home movie about my resilient, badass grandmother. <laughs> Filming already. <laughs> We get on a plane from Perth and we fly to Amsterdam and we're going on a river cruise down to Vienna where she's always wanted to go. I'm nervous for both of you. What about you? I'm trying to keep very calm and uh, actually, actually uh, I, I don't think I'm fully awake. You'd only ever been overseas once when I brought you here from South Africa 30 years ago and I wasn't gonna be there to watch out for you. So, you know, I was really worried, but you wouldn't be cautioned. You were just so determined, like, get out of my way and let me go. Grandma, when we arrived in Amsterdam, I pretty quickly realised that you see strangers as potential friends, or perhaps more specifically as a potential audience. Inhale. The way you smoked that joint gave me a whole new level of respect for you. Oh my gosh. What do you think? Should we get drunk? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hang out with young people. I want to hang out with you.
So you organised for the engineer to come and fix your walker? Yes. I'm now shrinking violet. <laughs> You chose this cruise because it would take you to Vienna, the city you'd always dreamed of. You signed up for every walking tour. You wanted to see and do everything. That's the window. See the inside, everything is made of wood. You're amazing. Did you know that? Look at the man. Gotcha. <laughs> but you tired easily. And I didn't know what I was doing. Should we try me pushing you? Which way are we going? That way. So sit down. I'm not going to push you backwards. Push that way. This is called Granny Cam. No, am I focused? You're in focus. OK. Ready? Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Let me get my feet up. OK. Three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to go on the bike path. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 You're being a very attentive nurse. I really love you. <laughs> uh, uh. This one. And this one. Okay, you can open your eyes, bitch. Miraculously, you just had a mild concussion. But I will never forget the sight of your body flying off the front of that walker and landing headfirst into the cement. Welcome back. I felt like it was now my mission to protect you from harm at all costs. The funny thing was, as soon as everyone on the ship heard what had happened, you became a kind of celebrity. And of course, you loved the attention. <laughs> oh, another turn, another turn. Oh, la la. As the days went by, you and I became closer than ever. There was lots of hopping on and hopping off of buses, beautiful architecture and fun parties. And you did your best to make the most of it. I didn't realise that something serious was happening to you. Uh, 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 
I just don't seem to be able to breathe, to breathe properly. Uh, 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 Can I do anything for you? Uh, um, water? Oh yeah, can we get some more water? Water? Yeah. <laughs> I still feel that I want to strive for Vienna and I am determined to remain to come what may to make some kind of effort. There was no doctor on the ship and as we arrived in Vienna, the coughing got worse and worse. Doing it. Taking Vienna by storm. This morning we will have to as many of our landmarks as possible. Here on the left hand side, if you can't see, 65 meter high, that means it has 15 little wagons. A huge building on the right hand side, see a globe on top of it? You wouldn't believe. A house just built... Halfway along the bus trip, you were so worn out, you just fell asleep. <sighs> yeah, it broke my heart. The bus stopped and everyone got off for a walking tour of the city. But you couldn't walk further than 20 metres. And the bus had stopped in the commercial area of Vienna, so all you saw of this magical city of classical music and beautiful architecture and art history was a kebab store and some pigeons. And you did everything in your power to make me feel like you were having a good time. I finally called for a doctor. Hi, I'm Sam. Hello, come in. What's your name? This is my grandmother, Laura. Can you uh, sit up? You have uh, or a bad, very bad pneumonia. Is it life threatening? Yes, I think it's serious. You should not continue your journey, okay? I mean, we have three days and then we go back to Australia. In three days you go back to Australia? Yeah. I don't think. Uh, I don't know, but I don't think. What do you mean? I don't think that she can go. You had to stay in hospital and we didn't know how long for, so we left the cruise. I found a hotel in Vienna and tried to find ways to keep your spirits up. So if we are, there's three possible plans. Plan C. I pick you up. Put you on my back. Right now. Kick you back out of here. We make a run for it. <laughs> to pass the time in hospital, you started telling me stories about your life. 
This is Cape Town. This is where Mum grew up and she just loved this place. She always said this was the happiest 10 years of her life spent as a little free spirit on the beach. So this is her parents, so that's Alice, named after Alice oh in Wonderland. Oh my God, look at that hat. <laughs> she was from English aristocracy. This is Richard. So that's her dad. God, he looks so severe. <laughs> he was a composer and a musician and he played in the South African orchestra and he brought music into her life and culture. He was a free thinker and he encouraged her to be one. He's the one who told her about Vienna, the home of classical music. So being in Europe was a lifelong dream for her. And then she went on the stage mm. as a young woman. And I love that photo. Yeah. My dad was a filmmaker, so she always had cameras around her and often was the subject. When they got married, he even took a camera on their honeymoon. So you think she enjoyed being filmed? I do. She was certainly used to it and she understood its power. She never wanted children, but it was the 1950s, so when she became pregnant, she had to give up her hopes of a career as an actor. And here she was in Vienna, and she spent four weeks in a hospital bed. Well, she hated being in hospital. She was severely unhappy, and... I started to see a side to her that I hadn't seen before. She's not a good patient. I've nursed her through, you know, many illnesses and a terrible trauma before, and she is not good when it comes to losing her independence and having people take care of her. She really hates that. You want to take blood pressure? Yep. By the end of it, we were both exhausted. Freedom! Onwards and upwards. Before we left, I tried really hard to make up for the disaster of the trip. as heroes with great stories to tell. But the trip had taken a huge toll on us. I couldn't handle the guilt I felt. And when you flew back home to the other side of the country, I didn't know what you were thinking. Mum and I spent Christmas together with friends, but we both felt your absence. Tell me, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing embroidery, something for Grandma for Christmas, which is the Ferris wheel in Vienna. And here in this carriage, you can see I've put Grandma and I. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Oh, now you got it. Yeah. Okay, I'm rolling. When my mother came back from her trip to Europe, she had had pneumonia over there and was a very serious bout, and she had some transition happened to her where she suddenly felt very old. Then, you know, she called me up and said, I need to talk to you. 
bring a camera, I have something I want to say. And that may seem like an odd thing for a parent to say, but I have already made a film about my mother when she was sexually assaulted in her house in South Africa in her 60s. There was a slow awakening there that perhaps somebody else could be interested in my dark secret, my nightmare that I've been trying to sweep under the carpet. The film was a search for justice. It had a big impact and she saw that. So she was not unfamiliar with the idea of using a camera to tell story. So she asked me to come over and bring a camera. Yeah. And just call me, Mila. If you want to debrief. Okay. Mother-daughter relationships are never easy. <laughs> but mine with my mum was, um, you know, it was particularly difficult, um, challenging. It uh, <clears throat> could be it could be cruel. You know, I, I, as a child, there were times when I was really quite scared, and I had to self protect. When I got to Ballina, we talked for days with you trying to explain to me how your whole attitude to life has changed. I tried everything I could to cheer you up, but it didn't work. And then you said, can you switch the camera on? I want you to record this. Is my hair all right? I'm, do I need to go and check up anything? Uh, you look fine. Uh, um, so what do you want to say? I am 88. I've already passed the age where uh, I passed all, all my, I passed all my allotted time, and I suppose I could live to a hundred. But, but if I get, if I go on, uh, I will, I will simply start losing my own faculties, and I will start to be, start to be uh, very dependent. Um, I'm starting to feel dependent on other people right now. I'm afraid that that trip was really the end of me. My eyes have lost their sparkle. I've got a sort of permanent headache. I'm not able to work up the interest in anything. It's not fun anymore. That's why I asked you to come. I wanted this trip to be a goodbye. So she told you that she wanted to end her life? Mm because she wanted to do it then. She actually imagined that this was going to happen on that trip. And oh, my God. I thought, oh. You see, I'd, I'd been through this before. Can you talk me through that? Yeah, when I was 14, she tried to kill herself. Um, I had to walk around the living room till the ambulance came. And, I mean, as a 14-year-old, that was pretty terrifying. But I realised later, or perhaps my father said, it was a cry for help. And then later in life, when she'd been through a terrible trauma, she kept threatening to kill herself. And again, it felt like she wanted just more attention from me. So I just thought maybe that was what was going on here. I just wasn't sure. That isn't easy for me to just hear that. I or don't do you want me to talk you out of it? Or do you no, I don't want you to yeah. talk me out of it. I definitely don't want you to, 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 to even even attempt that. She was very calm about it. You know, it wasn't like she was distressed. So when she showed me the pills, I mean... I thought maybe this is different. I've managed to get my doctors, um, I managed to get the doctor to prescribe sleeping tablets for me, which I haven't taken. So I've now stockpiled a sufficient number, which is about 100. <sighs> I'm not sure what you want from me. Sleeping tablets possibly could kill you, 
but it possibly could not. So if you put a plastic bag over your head and you, then, you, then you are depriving yourself of oxygen, you, that, that, that is absolutely certain. Mm. Now, only thing that, that I would want you to do would be to make sure that that bag doesn't fall off. I'm sure I told her I love her plenty of times and that, you know, I want her to stay around and, and that I'd like her to live longer and those sorts of things. I just think her mind was already past that. I certainly don't want to be in the room when you put a plastic bag over your head. I just don't think I can handle that. I'm trying to be considerate, Cathy. I, I've reached the stage where I cannot do these things on my own anymore. I, I really do need a teammate. Oh. Can you just give us some more time, like three months or something like that? That would be the kindest thing to do. Mm hmm So you need about three months' notice? At least. So I couldn't do it on this trip. This, I thought my original intention was to come work for you to come here and say goodbye and then do it. But that would be too much. I do need to tell Sam. Well, of course, Sam. But uh, but somehow or other, we've got to we've got to got to get Sam to to accept this. The whole thing was just so weird and confusing, and I was thinking, Mum, what are you doing? I don't know how I told you, but I just remember that was a really difficult conversation to have. <sighs> She's on the other side of the country. She doesn't have anyone there around her. <laughs> I'm just so sad. All I wanted was to give Grandma a really nice experience. <laughs> I tried whatever I could to improve your quality of life. I bought you a new bed, an air conditioner, and cleaned up your flat, hoping if you were more comfortable, you would rediscover reasons to live longer. I also thought maybe you just need more fun in your life. So we arranged more outings. Maybe if we loved you enough, you might change your mind. Look, Laura. Hello. Are you out of breath? Feeling animals, the excitement of feeling animals. It just, it's just, it's all that sort of just takes so much energy out of me. And then I'm exhausted. Where are we going, Sam? What's happening? 
We are on our way to Alison's house. What are you hoping to get out of today? The blood. <laughs> Oh my god, it's really When did you get so tall? When did you get so small? <laughs> I, I haven't got so small yet. I'm, I'm much taller than you. <laughs> I'm not. Thank you. Sorry we're late, but there was all kinds of variables happening, weren't there? None of it was my fault. Off -road. None of it was your I wouldn't believe that it would be your fault. <laughs> I've been friends with Laura for about 20 years. When she first told me that she was going to end her life, I must say, I felt really apprehensive about it. I thought maybe if I visited her more or she got on a scooter and went for rides and we got an electric scooter, that might solve it. But that's not what she wanted to hear. Uh, I'm quite definite that, that, I am, uh, that I have reached a stage now where I, I don't see that sticking around, I'm going to achieve anything more. I mean, old age does not get better. You, it's not like you can't mend, mend like mending a fracture or, or, or curing a cold. It just gets worse. Very clear. Right. I thought of throwing myself off something, and then I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to survive that. Well, that's what happens. There's one thing that I'm absolutely definite about, and listen to this. I do not want to go into a home. Uh, we hear you. We hear you. OK, right. that's not going to happen. Yeah. All right. You were stuck. Even if we agreed to, it would be illegal in Australia for Sam and I to help you end your life. The new assisted dying laws being discussed in some states wouldn't help you because they apply to people who are terminally ill and you were healthy. We would never have thought that a journey back to Europe would be the answer. David Goodall is a long way from home. At the age of 104, he's travelled from Australia all the way to Switzerland, where it's legal to get help to suicide. At age 104, are you happy? I do, pardon? Are you happy? No. No, I'm not happy. I want to die. Dr Goodall is a long-time member of Exit International, a group which campaigns for voluntary euthanasia. At the airport in Basel is Dr. Philip Mitschke, the founder of Exit International. Switzerland is a very unique country. And whereas they were acknowledging, like most places, that suicide is not a crime, they went a little bit further to say that assisting a suicide is also not a crime unless it's provided for malicious or evil purpose. Foreigners can travel into this country and effectively take advantage of this Swiss law. When I first started to research this, I found that there were three places in Switzerland that were offering to do this service. I knew nothing about any of them. I didn't know which to approach. I wrote to Philip Nitschke and asked him for his advice. Eventually, I decided and picked on one. I, I just don't know the logistics of, all, of it all. And I need to know, I need to know how to get started. So what, what do I do? Yeah, I've been talking. I don't need to know any of this. Ah, go away. Dear Laura Henkel, please register online on our homepage. I'm trying to get it backwards. What, what, what's happening here? Dear Cathy, this whole business of getting to Switzerland is stressful and cumbersome. The backwards and forwards of documents is so time-consuming. I've got the email on. Tell me, how, how can I make this better? How can we better? 
Technology has made an idiot of me. Scrolling, scrolling by itself without me touching a damn thing. I very often feel complete despair at being unable to, as they put it, simply follow the prompts. I've sent her a copy of my passport, my divorce uh, agreement, plus the other document. We could do nothing but watch you power on. I have to be of sound mind. I have to be of sound body so that I can go to Switzerland. If it was available here in Australia, so much of this would fall away. We didn't know if you would even be accepted by a Swiss clinic and hoped that maybe you wouldn't. And then I heard about a young woman called Belinda and her story about her mother. The Premier of Western Australia, Mark McGowan. Belinda has walked four and a half thousand kilometres uh, and she has done this on the basis that she'd like to see other people across our community not go through the extreme pain and agony that her mother went through when she passed away. My mum was crumbling before my eyes. That day, her oncologist broke the news that she had several weeks left to live. In response, she asked her doctor, can you help me to go quicker? Her request was denied because we don't have a voluntary assisted dying law in Western Australia. She went on to die away in a way that will haunt me for the rest of my life. She died with her eyes wide open, rasping for air, and spent her last four hours on earth twitching. There are some things that we cannot change, and then there are things that we can. For the first time, I started thinking, what if you were to have a horrible, suffering death? I didn't want that for you, and I didn't want to remember you that way. This is when I started to see your radical idea in a whole new light. I took Sam along to the next rally, hoping that if she could see that there were all these hundreds of people who were campaigning for the thing that you wanted, she might find it easier to accept your decision. The run's pretty old. <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot of young people here. It's weird. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, but... for a future where we can one day look back and say to each other, how did it take us so long? I hope for a future where we are no longer scared to look our colleagues in the eye and say those words that are sometimes still so hard to say. I support voluntary assisted dying. Thank you so much. I felt for them that they really just wanted the right to die without suffering. But I didn't want my grandma to die. There's no way that you can have me forever. There's no way. Right. It's got to happen. But you've got so much life left in you. I have to die. There's no way that I can that I can avoid it. I can avoid it this year, but then next year, I, uh, or the year after, it's going to come. And I would rather face it now um, when I am compass mentors and uh, uh, am prepared for it.
She was going to do this anyway, so I don't think we had much choice. It was support her or walk away. I think that's when we thought we need to get a bit of expert help here. We don't know what we're doing. Mm. Hi, lovely to meet you. You too. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for coming. Here I am. So I wrote down some questions. <laughs> is this how you normally act? I don't know. <laughs> there, is, there is no normal. So I've been working with people for 25 years, people who are dying, families like you who are anticipating that experience coming, and uh, families who suddenly have someone who's died. OK. But people who I do want to tell them what's going on, like, do, do I say my grandma's committing suicide? You don't say that ever. The, the term suicide means kill yourself, and the phrase commit suicide is left over from when it was illegal to kill yourself. That phrase, commit suicide, is just completely not helpful at all. She's choosing to die on her own terms. The choosing to and die the is what we replace it with. Yeah. yeah. I... Laura seems to, when Sam and I are asking her, what would you like to do, she goes, nothing. So we're kind of having to come up with things. No, come I mean, up with what sort of things? Things to do with her, like, you know, things that we can share. Activities, you mean? Yeah, activities or... I don't know, it's just... Why can't you just let her be? It's not your role to be um, activity... Organisers, I would say. I mean, most people of that age, they're having an inner journey, really. Their body's tired, they've lived through lots of different experiences. And especially for someone who's really looking towards dying, that's, that's their intention. They don't want to be distracted, generally, by trivial other things. And part of a grandparent's role is to teach the grandchildren what it means to lose someone that you love and how to die in order to prepare you for when Cathy dies and your other parent. Please confirm that you've received the documents and the payment of the deposit. Kind regards, Laura. Okay. Press send. High five. Press send. It took you six months to get your application for the Swiss clinic done, and now you wanted the world to know your reasons. Mm. And so you wrote your manifesto. Oh, come on, where's the reasons now? There it is. This is something I've written. Euthanasia for all. In quotes, an ideal for which I'm prepared to die and the right to take responsibility for my life. Those are my headings. I'm not afraid to die, but frankly, I care very much how it will happen. Like most people, I shudder to think of the gruesome ways I could suffer in death. My mother had dementia and put herself to bed for 15 years. She had lost interest in everything and would cry bitterly that she wanted to die. If it happened to me, I wouldn't know anything about it. I have a horror of not knowing who my wonderful daughter or my clever granddaughter is. Before it happens, I would honestly rather die. The situation now is that friends, family, and even doctors are asking me, when am I going to move into a retirement home? Never. I've been independent all my life and view with utter dismay the prospect of being entirely dependent on someone else, no matter who that might be. Come on, come on. You can do it. Come on, puppy. <laughs> oh, we would have laughed as he rolled down the hill. Would have made great footage. I'm not sure it would. I'll never forget. I'll never forget Sam's face when, when I. That's that's the first thing. That's the first thing I remember when when I landed on my face. 
all, all smashed up and everything. And I look up and there's Sam's face and I think, my God, poor kid, I have to, I have to help her. Yeah. I think she, she, uh, she suffered emotionally far more than I did. Because um, uh, I, I suffered physically, she didn't suffer physically, but, but, uh, but uh, she was devastated. I wasn't. Uh, I just thought what a bloody fool you are. <laughs> All right. Shutting up. There is something that, that I really need to say to, to Sam. And it is part of this film, and, it's, and I have been avoiding saying it. Now, Sam, I love you very, very much. You know that, don't you? And I don't hold you responsible for anything. But from the moment that after I had that fall, everything went pear-shaped for me. And I got pneumonia because I couldn't cope with the, with the thing and I couldn't cope with, with the being trapped. And in a lot of ways in Vienna, I behaved very badly. Hmm. When I came back, I suddenly felt old. And the whole thing is based on the fact that I did have that fall. Now, I don't blame you. Do you get that? It's not your fault. You do understand that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Do you accept the fact that you're not to blame? Uh, maybe. I mean, you were there. You were there. You were instrumental, but you're not to blame. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know this is... It's really hot in here. I'm just so sorry. <laughs> but don't be... This, this is not what I want you to do, you see? I know. You don't have to be sorry. I just want you to forgive yourself. We were stuck in limbo waiting to hear back from the clinic and I just desperately needed to get away. So I found a job in Europe for six weeks. I wasn't even in Switzerland, but somehow it became my job to find out if your application had been approved. The official clinic, they don't have a phone number that we can find. Okay, I'm a millennial. I can work this out. I'm gonna Google map the address and there's a phone number. Okay, it goes. You can call me on Mondays and Thursdays. You can call me on Mondays and Thursdays. But it is Thursday. Okay, let me try without the zero. Please, do you have a telephone beyond order for the doctor? Doctor, I want Dr. Price to give you a packet. I wonder if I can play it into Google Translate. Fuck. This just should not be so fucking hard. This is insanity. Like, what if this takes so long that she develops dementia and then doesn't qualify anymore? This is my fourth attempt to call this number in Switzerland. Hello, um, is this Dr. Erica? No, I'm the secretary. My grandmother, Laura Henkel, has been um, communicating with, with Dr. Erica and with Life Circle since January. H-E-N-K-E-L. Henkel. 
Henkel. Yeah. Laura Henkel. Yeah. This email came in the last few days. Dear member, I confirm the date of 19th December 2019 for your assisted voluntary death, AVD. It all sounds so professional and so competent and so rational and so easy and so perfect. I couldn't think of a better way to die. It was completely surreal. I just remember looking at the calendar and going, I've got this many days until you die, Mum. Having the date confirmed definitely made it real. And I think that's when the grieving started. A medical professional, they should be talking about saving people from suffering. Okay. Within weeks of getting the green light, you were telling all your friends about it. I think it's a tough journey and I wish you... It is a tough journey and it's, it, it's, it's oh, always a tough journey when you go against a convention. It's my biggest anger about this is why you have to go to bloody Switzerland, drag everybody with you, all the cost, expense and hassle. Uh, it's not ideal, it's, it's not a good thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. Well, that's why I feel I must make a film. Yeah. I want to make a film about the subject. Mm. Now, I am blessed. I am privileged. I have two filmmakers. Two filmmakers. In yeah. my family, yeah. I feel almost obliged to use it. Yeah. Okay, good on you. While you were focused on the film and your message, Grandma, we were all trying to work out how to say goodbye to you and if we could make it a celebration. I thought that maybe she would love to have a farewell party and I thought the best thing I could offer was to hold it here at my house. She loves it here. <laughs> she loves Terry, my partner who built the house. Oh, I can you maybe hug. Not to see you. I just thought this would be a fitting end to this wonderful friend's life. Laura. Yeah. We're here to talk about and plan your celebration. Right. This is what we're having instead of a funeral, right? Yes. So yes. at a funeral, it's like you write this beautiful speech that you share about the person who's passed and they don't get to hear it. So this is an opportunity for us to say it to you. I just had an idea. Oh, well, we just got like Santa Claus. <laughs> so we back you on a throne. And we have a row of people all raiding to come in and say goodbye to <laughs> what happened to the Mad Hatter? Yeah, oh Hatter yeah, party. she could be the Mad Hatter sitting in the chair. Hey, she could be the Queen. It's reverence and comedy all wrapped up in one. Yeah. That's the how you'll slide all the way through this step. Yeah. You know, with funny moments and really sad moments. What do you think about all that? Does that sound good? Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm not glad I'm not organising it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
We'll remember this forever, you know. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Mm. Before the party, I wanted to find something that we could do together. You always spoke about your time on the stage with such passion, but I'd never seen you perform. So I arranged a theatre for a private performance. You do look, my child, in a moved sort, as if you were just made. Be cheerful, child. Our rebels now are ended. These are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sweet. I thought, gosh, would I have organised all that for you if we didn't have a set date for your death? There was one other thing that I wanted to do for her. So when Mum was packing up her things when she knew she was going to be leaving, she found this score. So her father was not only a player and a conductor in the orchestra, he was a composer as well. And he wrote a piece of music for her called Kubla Khan. Wow. He left it to her, but it never had seen the light of day. So I began working on a secret project. You know, when, when you know someone's dying, you want to do all those things that you'd really like to do for them. And we had that chance to do that because we know the date. She has no idea that this is happening. It's a very hard piece of music. Granddad. I think we might have dug something up that might be your bucket list. What? A thing called Kubla Khan. Oh, Kathy. Oh, my God. Wow. Really? Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for oh, giving that gift to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really. Is there any chance of hearing it again? There is nothing more valuable than the love of your children. Really, if you've got that, you've got everything. I still wasn't sure if I agreed with what she was doing. It just felt like there was a freight train going and I was like, who am I to stop this? Do 
do you want to talk about if you changed your mind? <laughs> well, I can tell you that there's not a hope in hell that I'll change my mind because, because what, what's the alternative? The alternative is all the things that, I, that I've been telling you that I dread. The alternative is for me to become this this horrible, uh, uh, undignified uh, b bit of trash, uh, or to go into or to go into a in, into some kind of institution and be abused. Um, uh, leave it. There were so many things to plan and organise. At the last minute, your application was transferred to a related clinic in Switzerland called Pegasus, who were more open to us filming. And we had to pack up your 90 years of life. So, we're going oh. through clothes. Woo. Okay, that's all the pants. This, this is new, so that one. Marie Kondo, say thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, going? Sorry. Sorry. Oh, just getting some books together to take to the party. Grandma, I've taken a quarter of your books. So when I see you next, you'll be arriving in Wonderland. It's weird to see the books walking out the door like this. I have to let everything go. Every belly thing. Tequila! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe the crazy lead up to this party. Thank God Sam was here to help me. We've been running around like mad things doing those last little bits. And luckily I got time to rush in and get, get something nice on. I don't want to offend you guys. I feel exactly the same as I felt before. I don't want her to go. I get why she's doing it. I just, for selfish reasons, don't want her to go because I like her. She's fun. I hope she changes her mind. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Welcome hello. to Wonderland. Yeah, I'm got a tale to tell <laughs> as well. Hello, hello everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. hello Nicolette. How are you? OK, and you? So I'm nice to see you. So I'm absolutely thrilled that you've come all this Good way. Excellent. Nice to see you. Oh. I'm very, very honoured that, <laughs> that you should come Laura. all this way for me. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, 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 for organising all this. Thank you, sweetheart. Right, mm -hmm. It's really lovely. Linda. Laura. Lovely, lovely to see you. Lovely. I had mixed feelings about coming today. Lovely. I fully support Laura's yeah. decision. But I've seen the effect it's had on the people who love her. You are cordially invited to a Mad Hatter's tea party. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You know, in the real Mad Hatter's tea party, they didn't have any food. <laughs> I've put your books uh -huh. around and I've put some of these photos of you reading in the books so that everyone can take home a book and a photo of you. Oh. But you're not because... allowed to take any home. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bit stupid. <laughs> Laura's and the carpenter were walking close at hand. Oh, Oasis, come and walk with us. The Walrus did beseech a pleasant walk, a pleasant talk beside the briny beach. The people that are here are the people that just love her and I think she's having a great time. It just seems crazy that this is the last time we get to see her. Hard saying goodbye to someone. Do 
dear mum, you've been the constant in my life, all my life, and I cannot imagine yet what life will be like without you in it. Every Sunday morning, I walk around the lake beside my home in Perth and we talk on the phone. This has become a ritual that's part of me now and I intend to keep it. You have agreed that if, if when you get to the other side, you have the choice to return to Earth as something, you're going to come back as a swan. Mm. So I'm having a bench put beside the lake with your name on it and I'll go there every Sunday and talk to you and look for the black swans, which I'm sure will come and be with me. And so we will continue our connection and conversations until I leave this place. I will miss you and love you forever. And I'm proud of the fact that you are no shrinking violet. <laughs> I never knew another grandparent and other than my mum and dad, you've been the only other family member I've lived in the same country as. And so you've played a huge part in forming my identity. The choice you're making is incredibly bold, incredibly controversial, and brings up a plethora of differing emotions, sometimes on an hourly basis. But the one thing I'm so grateful for is this. It's a wonderful and rare thing to be able to share these lessons and say thank you while you're here, rather than in a eulogy at a funeral you won't attend. From one lover of language to another, I feel it's pertinent to leave you with words from the master, Mr. William Shakespeare. We are such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Enjoy your sleep, Grandma, and know that your words, your lessons and your love will grow on like seeds, forever changing the way we see and exist in the world. Oh, thank you so much. I think you all know the reason for what I'm doing here. I've had a good innings. Not everyone gets to be still around at 90. But I can do one last thing for the planet by dying in a way that may pave the way for the law to be changed so that everybody can have this choice locally and not have to go to Switzerland to Benford. Yeah. So I raise my glass to my two highly inspirational partners who will carry on imaginatively after I've gone. And I'll say goodbye with love to you all for the words that Nelson Mandela said, this is a cause for which I am prepared to die. Last night, Western Australia became the second state in the country to introduce a voluntary assisted dying bill. The historic law will allow terminally ill patients likely to die within six months the right to end their life. The WA laws will not come into effect until mid-2021. Did you buy a return ticket? We had to. We had to, didn't we? Yeah, we had to. When you contacted us, we were really pleased that you were going to do a film about 
Laura, particularly given your manifesto. Okay. Because you're basically coming into here to say it's every rational person's right and it's your right and it's, ra it's rational suicide. And this is extremely controversial in countries like Australia. Yes. It's been polled in the Netherlands recently, this particular issue about rational suicide, and they're looking at legislation where every person over the age of 70 will be given the drugs whether you, if you want them. No reason needed. And you can keep it for when you need it? Yes. Then I could live a little longer? Yes, and people live yeah. longer because they stop worrying. They've got it in the cupboard. Mm. If they want to, they go to the cupboard, open the cupboard and they can die. And that actually wow. helps people live longer. That's what I want, because if I had that, if I've given the pill and it's there in my drawer and I could, do, I could make my own decisions, I could live probably another five years, no. maybe even another ten years. It's such a good idea. This makes me incredibly sad that if this did exist in Australia, this mm. pill in the cupboard, you would stay longer. Of course I would. What do you classify as rational? The person who knows what they're doing. And it's generally accepted if you're a functioning person in society, you have mental capacity. Yeah. But then, of course, when it comes to making the biggest decision of all, I want to die, can I die? People say, well, maybe they've got some sort of mental disease we haven't diagnosed. In fact, some argue that anyone who wants to die must be mentally sick and it just hasn't been established. Currently in Switzerland, you have to be of sound mind, but a doctor can do it. And all you have to do is to talk to Dr. Christian tonight and he will tell you straight away whether he thinks you're of sound mind or not. Hello. Hello, good evening. Dr. Christian Weber. Right. I'm one of the doctors to see you ahead of your appointment on Thursday. Right. Okay. I told you that I'm coming today? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, great. You, you are greatly expected. Great expectations. Ah, okay. Uh, so, you sent your whole documentation to Basel. Mm hmm But you still decided finally to put an end to your life. Yes, yes. Yes, I have a, very, I have a lot, of, lot of reasons which I feel are very valid reasons. This is a form, finally, to, to make the prescription of the drug. Right. OK. Have you ever underwent general anesthesia in your lifetime? Yeah, 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 many times. OK. So it will be on Thursday exactly the same, like general anesthesia. Yes. I'm, I have no fear of it. With a huge difference, with general anesthesia, finally, you're waking up again after the procedure. I'm, well, I'm not going to do uh, that. This one, this time, you will not wake up. Right. How long until she dies? Uh, so she will lose consciousness uh, in 15 or 30 seconds and death uh, not very probably inside two minutes or three minutes. No, no pain, no suffering. Absolutely no pain after opening the clamp. That's so fast. Yeah. She will die so quickly. I have to put you on IV line. Yeah, he's going to have problems finding my veins. My main profession is anesthesiologist. <laughs> I'm doing nothing else the whole day than looking for veins. <laughs> I know. Therefore, I'm not married, because most men are saying, oh, you have beautiful eyes. And anesthesiologists are saying, oh, you have beautiful veins. This is not really a compliment, and for that reason, I'm not married, you see. I think, I think, <laughs> this is not how I thought the doctor's visit would go. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Why? Doctors are usually in such a hurry that they haven't got time to get to know their patients. I'm uh -huh. not a religious guy, but nevertheless, I always said when the Lord made the time, he made plenty of it. <laughs> 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 you have to undersign a couple of documents. What sort of documents? Uh, essentially, what should happen with your corpse after you died. Do I have to say I'm suffering? No. 
I'm not prepared to say that I am suffering and I'm ill and all the rest. No, no, if you're not ill, if you're not suffering, don't say it. Suicide is considered in, in legal terms as an unnatural death. And in that case, we have to call finally the police just to make sure that this was not murder, manslaughter or anything else. Right. And you will see that two policemen entering in with their weapons, with uniforms, and they will say, okay, great, you're absolutely damned right. There's a dead woman lying in the bed. <sighs> Perfect. There are no more, no more doctors or psychiatrists for me to see? No. I think okay. you're sound of mind. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So you look exactly as I imagined you. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> is this it? Can, yeah. Yes. This is the bed where you can lie on right. to have the Make infusion. It, if I want it. <laughs> <laughs> you decide. <laughs> you come in here, you lie on the bed, we set the drip oh. with saline. And then when you when you say, Rudy, it's time for me to go, yeah. then we put the medication yeah. into the saline. Right. And then you open the drip, and then you fall asleep. If I suddenly decide here that I want to change my mind, can I come back tomorrow? Absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you say yes? Your... Look. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> it is really up to you to decide if you want to go or not. Up to the last moment when you open that wheel, uh -huh. you can say, oh, today is not my day. You know, I want uh -huh. to get out. <laughs> this is not something you can do like an industrial process. You know, it's, everybody uh -huh. has their own wishes. Right, and it's nice if you can accommodate that, you know. Uh -huh. That's yeah. the way it should be. Do you feel comfortable in this place? Okay. Yes, yeah, this is, this is, I feel quite comfortable here. Yeah. I just want to get the hell out of here. His French, of course, is the best. You know, that's where he comes from. I'm really, really freaking out. Get out of here. Now let's go get some food, shall we? Some real food. You can't live with this. Go to the Do not pass go. Do we have to put that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is very bold of us to be playing this game on our last day together. This game destroys families. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. That would be $25 for me, please, Grandma. <laughs> 
Can I pay you later? <laughs> what in 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. All debts must be paid today, I'm afraid. What happens when we die? Yeah. Oh, I don't have the frog yes. Have you seen a dead person? <laughs> no. No, tomorrow will be my first. Well, you want us all to be in tears? Oh, no. Uh, no, no, no. Do not weep for me when I am dead. So, no weeping? What, what mood are you after? Fun. Fun? Humor. <laughs> Fun and humor. Is that going to be hard? You won't burst into tears. I don't, I don't want that, but I just think like fun and laughter, we can do our best. We can do our best. I'm not going to. But I don't, it won't worry me all that much if you want to cry. But you don't have to cry to impress me. <laughs> What happened? Donald Trump got impeached. Today? Today. Oh, on what charge have they managed to do that? Oh, you know all that drama that went on? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, it's just sort of complicated. I, I, I have to comb my hair. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. I know what I want to go. Um, can we start from the beginning? Absolutely. Uh, old age. Yes, I think it's about time somebody talks about it the way it is, uh, without all the fantasy and the hoo-ha. Um, uh, if I if I mention death, oh, you mustn't talk about that. Oh, you mustn't think that way. A, a suffering is good for you. It's good for the soul. Oh, okay. You suffer, and I'll watch. Are these thoughts that you've had overnight? That you... No, this was, this was something that I was having this morning. Yes. I just went and stood in front of the mirror and said, you, you suffer and I'll watch. <laughs> what you're doing is so much more dignified and we can see you alert and aware, everything. This is a great way to remember someone. Mm. My name is Laura. Today is the 19th of December 2019 and I'm in Switzerland. I'm here to end my life in, my, in, in the most wonderful, peaceful way by just going to sleep with my loved ones around me. This is my own choice. Good morning, Christian. <laughs> How are you doing? Fiona. Kathy's ah. gotten the purple folder with all the paperwork. Ready, ready. Works accident accidentally been left in the hotel room. Do you want us to go and get it? That's the civil documents. Later. Do you have all the passports here? I don't have anything. 
I've fucking done so much. This is the one thing that I delegated. <laughs> it wasn't my responsibility. Please do not. Please. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. It's all right. Sam, Sam. We'll, we'll get it afterwards. It's okay. Oh, God. I'm meaning that. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. Can we get it afterwards or before? Because Philip can I and run and go. We can go and run and go and get it now. Okay. It says, I declare that after in-depth and long-time reflection, I want to make use of my right to bring my life to an end by myself. Therefore, I induce today my voluntary death. It all make sense? Yeah, okay. okay. I think it's just getting worse. <laughs> starting to deteriorate. <laughs> You're doing just fine. <laughs> So now we should go into this room up there. Uh huh. Right. Do you do you have to do the infusion straight away? No. Right. Uh huh. Do you want to just go in there and before the infusion? Yes. And just, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yes. One, two, three. Ooh. Oh. Oh. And I get a hug at the end. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah. oh. oh, look at that. <laughs> Do you think you're going to want this? How, how warm are you feeling? Um, Let's take it off. Yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye, glasses. Can you give us a, a little bit of time before you, before sure, you? Sure, sure, sure. We will leave and your clothes in. Thank you so no much. Problem. Okay, DJ Sam. All right, champagne in bed. This is decadent. Oh, I know. That's a big pour, Miss Hank. Well, what the hell? I just want to say thank you so much, Kathy. You have been an absolute joy in my life. You had so much to do and so many things to think of, and you kept your cool. You've not got. You've not got even, you haven't even got stressed. You've been absolutely wonderful. I had never thought that, uh, uh, that one could love a grandchild as much as you can love a child, as, as much as you can love a daughter. I think I actually said that to you. But, it's, but you've proved me wrong. <laughs> I absolutely adore you. I absolutely adore you and I love you. So totally and unconditionally, it doesn't matter what you do, <laughs> I will absolutely love you and adore you forever. Absolutely beautiful. So simple and it's so beautiful. Mm. Your farewell post has had 399 shares. Oh, That's shit. amazing. Safe travels, Laura. You're a pioneer and a thought leader. Uh -huh. And they're just all so, like, thanking you for your strength, your compassion, your activism. I'll keep fighting for a better world as long as I can. Uh -huh. I, I think that's resonating. And there's just hundreds of these. I've written many, many times, and I'm, if I've got one share, I'm lucky. 
And uh, if I get about 10 likes, I'm lucky. Now, they don't know. I think I must die more often. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Right. There's one good, one good vein. Ah, ah, ah. Every move, every time you move it, it's ah, ah. Well, everything is fine. <laughs> you do the suffering, I'll do the watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you should do is to push the little wheel up like that. All I have to do is get it from there to there. Absolutely. What happens if I get halfway and I stop? Um, it's be better, Laura, if you push it up all the way. Yep. You know? Don't stop at the halfway. <laughs> no <laughs> half measures, up. Laura. <laughs> no, <laughs> Laura, no rehearsals. <laughs> OK? <laughs> it's good? I'm happy. OK. What's this? This is fine with the block. OK, we're not ready yet. Sorry. We're not quite ready yet. Okay. If that's okay. I'm not. <laughs> oh. I wish I'd met you before. Me too. Thank you for all the work. Thank you for the experience. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's always really a pleasure meeting you. It's really lovely. I really admire your bravery and your family. Really glad you can do what you wanted to do. Well, thank you. Thank you. This is weird. This is weird. <laughs> we stuck together, you and me. We did. We were actually a very good team, I think, mm -hmm. right from the word go. We, you. As a child, loved me very much, and uh, uh, and I loved you in, immensely. If you hadn't come around, I probably would have been gone long ago, because life was not worth living. Thank you. If you see anything more on the logistics side that you, <laughs> that, you that you need to know. No. <laughs> For God's sake, like, where's the, where's the purple fog? <laughs> no, we got all that. Uh, I'd like to have some water to wet my whistle. <laughs> What's the time? It's half past two. Uh, got really time to go. You ready? Okay. Uh, Love you so much. <laughs> yeah. Love you so much. Yeah. Okay. So, Laura, can you tell me your name, your given names, and your date of birth, please? Laura Catherine Henkel. Okay. My date of birth is 1st of November, 1929. Okay. Can you tell me why you are here today? I'm here to die. Okay. I put you an IV line on the left hand, and I explained you the mechanism. Can you tell me what will happen if you're pushing the little wheel up? Well, I will die. Okay. If this is really your wish, you can now push the little wheel. All right. I love you. I love you, Mum. Love you, Mum. You're amazing. I love you so much. And please, please, boss, get your following and do what you can. We the world you. is the world needs you. Okay. Okay. I love you. Okay. Here we go. Love you so much.
Done. Love you, Mom. Love you. I love you very, very much. I really do. Uh, yeah. Who's hand? Who's behind it's me? It's just Christian. Ah, yeah. thank you very much, Christian. That's lovely. We love it's you. Good journey. Uh -huh. Sweet dream. This is a good, good cause. It's a good dream. And you're going to make a good, good film, and you're going to, you're going to cause a tsunami. <laughs> and you got a, a fear. Oh, She did it. She got what she wanted. She did it. She did it her way. So proud of me. Oh, amazing person. Can we close her mouth? No. It's not really you anymore, is it? Something much bigger now. Mum, after you died, everything just went really quiet. And it remained quiet for days afterwards. 
And it's because the way that you left was so peaceful. Maybe after all, this was a gift. Grandma. It's still hard for me to understand or make peace with what you did. But I can make peace with the role that I played in it. You knew you were loved. We have some stunning memories. And you didn't die alone. So... As hard as it was, I'd do it all again. things about you now that I didn't understand, about life and about death. You've shown us compassion and wisdom, and I hope that our film does that justice. And that you're happy with this film. I know you're hard to please, but we did our best. <laughs>